Hey there, Rebus Forever here. I've got like five seconds until the birds will start making an awful sound to record this, so fingers crossed. Also, there was no way of making a one minute ish review of it. Well, you know, there is, but it wouldn't have been one I was happy with. So, this is a rev view. Rev views are what happens when I want to make a review that's longer than a one minute ish review. This is the most rev viewy rev view that I've reviewed. Stick with it, feedback, always helpful, blah, blah, blah. I remember owning the earlier games in the Star Control franchise. I associate warm feelings of nostalgia to the series. In my memory, I can see the cases for the games on shelves, a bit worse for the wear, but as distinct and clear pieces of my memory. I cannot, however, for the life of me, remember a second of the gameplay from those earlier games. As such, I'm tempted to go back for a refresher once I get this done. If you were expecting a comparison in any way, sorry to disappoint. I'm also not going to be covering the dispute between Stardock and the original creators over who owns the Star Control IP. I did a video on that separately, so I didn't have to do that here. I'm 20 hours in. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Scrive attack ships on fire off the shoulders of Uxor. I watched black hole cannons generate the complete opposite effect of glittering in the dark near the fluorescent approach starbase. When you close this video 20 seconds from now, all of those moments will be lost in time, like beads of sweat running down a Taiwan's back. This is the hardest game to review I have attempted so far. It's not that I don't think the game is good, I just don't know if the type of good Star Control Origins has is going to be good for everyone, or even most people. You do game things in the game, nothing new, not always well. There's some killy bits, some talking to things, rarely in that order, a whole bunch of exploring, and a lot of mining. Like so much mining. This game makes no man's sky blush. The game is wonderfully written, though perhaps badly paced, depending on your tastes. If you like your action non-stop in adrenaline field, then you're probably better off sticking to watching a Let's Play on YouTube sped up to times 10 while listening to some speed metal. The game features a huge living universe populated by a multitude of alien races, many of whom I have yet to even encounter. Without extra fuel tanks and restricted to using slow engines, you will be limited to local space. If you're careful when exploring not to waste your time mining every planet because you, like me, fail to notice that the game actually tells you how much value the minerals on a planet are worth, and thus frequently spend 5 minutes or more searching for 50 credits worth of iron and landing on every viable planet, even landings can be minimised. With a discerning attitude to exploration, good progress can be made. Once you've made it through the earlier stages and discovered a few of the ancient star bases, your range of upgrades and quick methods of getting across space will increase. Over time, resource collection becomes a thing you do alongside completing missions, rather than instead of. This leaves more time to appreciate the excellent storyline, at least as far as I've encountered. As with many elements of the game, there is nothing new or exceptional about the story, but the excellent writing and voice acting, and even the music, help elevate the more generic elements. I would even argue the presentation of the story helps elevate the more shallow, individual components of the game. Navigation in hyperspace mirrors that of in-system flight, with simple controls akin to the Sid Meier's Pirate franchise, with gravitational effects trying to spoil up your intended course here rather than strong westerly gales. Upgrades improve the speed and handling of your ship and lander, flying across large planetary systems, hunting down all the moons and planets to make sure you aren't missing a crashed ship or a particularly rich planet, can be a tedious affair, as can the lander missions. No matter how much you upgrade the lander, you still have to use it, and that ceases to be fun early, and shows no signs of becoming fun again any time in the foreseeable future. The best thing it is possible to say about the land components is that over time you need to do them less. As you proceed you will be able to strip a planet's wealth in one trip and make less trips as you upgrade your storage capacity and the range of your mothership, providing a wider range of resource-rich worlds. The combat, inappropriately named fleet battles, consists of a series of 1v1 top-down arcadey battles until one side or the other runs out of ships. Initially I was disappointed not to see a more tactical large-scale style combat, but I've actually grown to enjoy this. Perhaps this just means that I've developed some sort of Stockholm Syndrome, but my favourite ship has become one of the most basic since I've learnt how to make the best use of its weapons. It is best to keep a good supporting fleet, as you need to keep your flagship out of combat in all but a last resort. Once that gets killed, it's game over man, and game over is a bad thing. As I say, this has been a hard one to decide on, and reduced to a simple yay or nay that is required for the Steam review system. On the one hand, a lot of the game is very basic, and like the combat or the land emissions, not even that engaging after the 20th or so time of doing either. But they are acceptable. Kind of like a plain cracker. Almost certainly intolerable on their own, but once you get the tasty storyline cheese and other toppings, they actually make a pretty good snack. Except in this case, I'd potentially complain there's just a little bit too much cracker, and not enough tasty topping. Still enough to keep me chomping though. That said, I haven't eaten an actual proper cracker for about 10 years because gluten-free ones are crap, so maybe that factors into why I'm prepared to give the game a recommend. Given the last time we saw a Star Control game, it was the 90s. So yeah, if anyone can recommend a half-decent gluten-free cracker, I'm all ears. Hang on.
I think I just got lost in my own simile. For anyone who sometimes enjoys a game, where you take things slowly and is prepared to spend a lot of time exploring and mining, and are able to put the time in to find the necessary upgrades required to really enjoy the game, you should get your money's worth. For anyone else who gets tired of grindy activities quickly, I would say stay away. Like, really, 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 really far away. The earlier stages of the game might wear you down and prevent you from enjoying the full experience. It would be no fault on your part if that were the case. Go spend your cash elsewhere. Have a blast. Otherwise, Star Control is a perfectly reasonable addition to what I remember of the franchise, which I'm almost certain had no shortage of grind itself. As I so often find myself saying, if you know in advance what you are getting yourself into, this game will eat your time will give you a brilliant opportunity to catch up on audiobooks, and should entertain you as you progress through the story. But just remember, in space, nobody can see you impatiently looking at the time. Well, unless they're looking directly at you in an illuminated space. Then if, then they can, because, I mean, that's obvious. I don't even know why you're questioning me. Thanks for watching! There's a Steam group, there's a Discord, there's a PayPal, there's a Patreon, if you want to do any of those things. And if you're just feeling old-fashioned, you could just like and subscribe. I mean, really, especially those last two. Toodle-pip!